He's pretty much saying, this is what I've called you to do. All you got to do is go out and take the land. I've already provided for everything else. I'm going to be with you. You can be your own person. Keep your eyes on the prize. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And he wasn't saying don't feel fear. He was telling him to... Dear fear, I only refer to you as dear because of our long-term intimate relationship. And certainly not because you're dear to me in any way. In fact, you've been a tormenting influence from start to finish. You've told me lies and prevented me from doing the things I wanted to do and should have done. You are indeed a miserable, wretched companion and one that I no longer am willing to be involved with. I'm writing you this letter to let you know that from this point forward, I will not fear. Although I may feel your presence, I will not bow down to your demands. I have a friend whose name is Jesus, and he has promised to never leave me nor forsake me, but to be with me always. He is indeed a powerful friend, and although you do have some power, he is by far much greater than you are. You can come against me, but Jesus lives in me, and the power of the one that is in me is greater than you are. If you don't believe me, see 1 John 4, 4. <laughs> Although I cannot prevent you from coming to visit, I do want to give you notice that you will be ignored. I am far too busy now fellowshipping with my friend Jesus and developing an intimate relationship with him to give you any of my time. The more time I spend with Jesus, the more courageous I become. He is teaching me a new way to live, one that is exciting and adventurous, one that is fearless. I also want to inform you that since I have so much experience with you and know how self-defeating it is to listen to you, that I now intend to tell as many people as I can what a thief and what a liar you are. The years I have wasted with you will be redeemed and I will bear much good fruit. Thank you for driving me to Jesus. You see, you made me so miserable that I sought a way to be free from you and Jesus met me where I was and set me free. Should you decide to waste my time and try to visit, even after receiving my letter, I am letting you know ahead of time that you will be met by faith in God and a determination that I will not fear. Come on, give God praise. And yes, I wrote the letter. Let me just say from the beginning that Fear is something that's not ever going to completely disappear from our lives. The feeling of fear is not ever going to completely disappear. And just because you feel fear, that doesn't mean that you have to be afraid. And I don't know about you, but that was a real great revelation to me many years ago because I kept wanting to not feel afraid, and God wanted me to feel the fear and be courageous anyway. Courage means to go ahead and Take the action that you believe you should take or that you know God wants you to take while you feel fear. We let our feelings dictate to us way too much. And so the only acceptable attitude that a Christian can have is simply, I will not fear. So let's all say that. I will not fear. Now, once again, that doesn't mean that you'll never feel fear. Matter of fact, I can pretty much promise you that you will. But it does mean that you can feel the fear, do whatever you believe that you're supposed to do while you feel afraid. You can learn to do it afraid if that's the only way that you can do it. Don't let the feelings of fear keep you trapped any longer. There are 365 times in the Bible, they say, that says fear not. Why is that in there so much? Because God obviously knew that just like he offers us faith, Satan was gonna offer fear. Everything that the devil offers is the opposite and perverse of what God offers. We receive from God through faith and we receive from the enemy through fear. We let God into our life through faith. We let the enemy in through giving in to fears. And so we need to learn how to live from faith to faith to faith and not from faith to fear and back to faith and then to fear and faith to fear and faith to fear. Anytime that God wants us to do anything that's going to benefit us or benefit anybody else, you can pretty well be assured the enemy is going to try to come against us and make us afraid. 
He can plant thoughts in our mind, but we need to learn that if those thoughts are not in agreement with the Word of God, that those are the ones that we need to cast down and learn how to say the devil is a liar. Let's practice. The devil is a liar. All right. Now, Joshua chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, Moses, my servant, is dead. So now arise and take his place. Wow, what a job. What a job. Go take Moses' place. He'd been watching what Moses had been doing. He'd been seeing how the people behaved every time they didn't get their way. All these years, he'd been out in the wilderness with Moses and all these Israelites who were just griping, complaining, murmuring, always wanting to blame Moses for everything that didn't go right. And so now, Moses is dead, and God says to Joshua, now you arise, get up, and before you can do anything, you got to get up, so that's another whole message all in itself. And it doesn't just mean to get up physically, you got to get up on the inside first. And part of what I want to do this weekend is get people to get up on the inside get you determined that you're going to do what God wants you to do, confront what you need to confront, be the person that God wants you to be, and have all that Jesus died for you to have. And there's got to be a determination, a holy determination on the inside of us, and I call it getting up on the inside. You've got to get up on the inside before you can ever get up on the outside. Amen. The enemy's always pushing us to give up and to believe that we can't do something. And as soon as we start going down inside then everything else will follow and we'll stop doing the things that we're supposed to be doing. So he said, Moses is dead, now arise, get up, take his place, go over this Jordan, you and all the people, into the land which I am giving to them, the Israelites. Now the next verse is so amazing, and if we miss this verse, we miss a wonderful message in the Word of God. Every place upon which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given to you as I promised Moses. Okay, now, now he didn't say, if you do this and that, I will give you the land. He said, I have already given you the land, now you go take it. No, you didn't hear me. I have already given you everything that you need to live an amazing life, now you arise and go take it. Amen? In other words, you've got to have a holy determination. Jesus died for me to be free, and free I'm going to be. Jesus died so I could be bold and courageous and secure and confident, and that's the way I'm going to live. Jesus died for me so I don't have to spend my days worrying and being frustrated, and that's the way that I'm going to live. Amen? And I, look at me while I tell you something. If you are not determined, You'll never have what God wants you to have. And nobody can be determined for you. I said nobody can be determined for you. But if you are determined, then nobody can stop you. Amen? Anything that God wants you to have, there's no devil in hell and no person on earth that can keep you from having it if you just won't quit and give up. So our destiny is not in the hands of all these other people. It's between us and God. Amen? Every place on which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I already given unto you. From the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, to the land of the Hittites, Canaan and the great Mediterranean Sea, on the west shall be your territory. I love verse 5. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Now, here comes another big message. Although he said, I want you to go and take Moses' place, he's now saying, but you don't have to be like Moses. You don't have to go do what Moses did or talk the way Moses talked or pray the way Moses prayed or dress the way Moses dressed or do things the way Moses did them because Moses was only successful because I was with him and I will be with you as I was with Moses. That's better than your acting. You know what that means? Whatever God tells you to do, no matter how impossible,
impossible it might seem to you. If God said it, you can do it. But you won't do it if you don't believe that God will do it through you. Just as he is with anybody else that's successful at anything, God will also be with you. Matter of fact, if Josh would have went out and tried to be like Moses, he would have failed. And many people fail because they never have, now listen, the courage to be who they are. They're always trying to be somebody else, a copy of somebody else instead of the original that God has designed them to be. Be strong, confident, and of a good courage. For you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you must be strong and very courageous that you might do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. So he's basically saying whatever God has told you to do, that's what you need to do. Don't turn away from what God has told you to do. Don't look to the right or the left, but keep your eyes straight ahead and go for it. Can I just say to you tonight, whatever God has put in your heart, go for it. Come on, tell the person next to you, go for it. All right. Now, two more verses here. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you might observe and do according to all that's written in it. For then you'll make your way prosperous, deal wisely, and have good success. Have not I commanded you, be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So in four verses, he uses three of those four verses to say, now, don't let fear stop you. He's pretty much saying, this is what I've called you to do. All you got to do is go out and take the land I've already provided for everything else. I'm going to be with you. You can be your own person. Keep your eyes on the prize. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And he wasn't saying don't feel fear. He was telling him to fear not because God knew that he would feel fear. But he said, don't let it stop you. Don't let it stop you. It's amazing what we lose in life by listening to fear instead of listening to God. Now, what did Jesus purchase for us with his death and resurrection? Well, first of all, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So how much time do you waste feeling guilty and condemned? How many days do you waste being frustrated and upset and worried? How many days do you let the devil steal your joy and you're all down in the dumps and depressed and discouraged all the time? Well, then you're not living in what Jesus died for you to have. Come on. Do you know I think it takes more guts to live free from guilt and condemnation than probably any other thing that we can stand up against. Jesus said, I have made you right with me through your faith in Jesus Christ. But the devil wants us to feel totally wrong all the time about ourselves, about something. If you're praying, you're not praying right. If you listen to the word, you don't remember anything you heard. If you read the Bible, you don't understand it. I mean, you, when is enough ever enough? It's never enough if you listen to the devil. And so I recall when the Lord put on my heart many years ago, he said, Joyce, if you want to use your faith for something big, use your faith to live free from guilt and condemnation. Because I felt guilty about something absolutely all the time. And here's the bottom line. The Bible says that when we sin, which we do, that God has already provided our forgiveness through the death and resurrection of Christ. We need to repent, which means be sorry for the sin, be willing to turn away from it. And then once we've done that, we believe that God forgives our sins. He forgets them and removes them as far as the east is from the west. Therefore, when I feel guilt, it is a lie from the devil because God says that he forgot it and I need to forget it. Jesus died for you to have that freedom. Amen. Don't waste another day feeling guilty about the mistakes you made yesterday. I can't do anything about your feelings, but I can tell you how to live. And if you live the way you should live, then your feelings will catch up with your decision. 
Did you get that? You can't wait for your feelings to all be right before you believe something. You believe first, you act on your faith, and your feelings catch up with it later. You want it one more time? <laughs> See, we listen to our feelings too much, but I feel, but I feel, but I feel. Well, I got a book for that too, Living Beyond Your Feelings. <laughs> <coughs> I've had a cough and a throat thing for <clears throat> close to three weeks now. I was in Colorado Springs. I was in Colorado Springs about three weeks ago, and by Saturday morning, I did it. I did it. You haven't done anything fun until you stand up in front of a few thousand people and your voice doesn't want to work. But anyway, I was preaching that morning on finishing a race, so I decided that I would, and I squeaked it out, and we got through, and... I said, if you're willing to listen, I'm willing to talk. But anyway, I've had a pretty bad cough, so I'm going to... If I cough a little bit, that's why. I just thought I'd tell you. There's nothing wrong with me except the devil's trying to shut my mouth and it ain't going to work, so there. <laughs> we'll just keep going. And my husband's going, drink the water, drink the water. <laughs> I can't stop talking long enough to drink the water. <laughs> so, okay, I remember where I was at. Isn't that good? You can't let your feelings rule your life. Just because you feel guilty, that doesn't mean you are guilty. If you've asked God to forgive you and you're sincere and you really, with all your heart, don't want to keep doing those kinds of things anymore, then you believe what the Word says more than you believe how you feel. And when you begin to believe what the Word says more than your feelings, your feelings will catch up. Amen? All right. We always believe first and everything else comes later. Now, he died so we can have an intimate relationship with God. Do you have an intimate, close relationship with God? So we can have power. We have power. We don't have to go around whining and wimpy and I can't and it's too much and it's too hard. No, we have power. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. We can do whatever we need to do through Christ who is our strength. Let me tell you something, you beautiful single mom. If your stinker husband ran out on you with another woman and he's not helping take care of your kids and you're a single mom and you're trying to raise them all by yourself, don't you ever say again, this is just too hard for me, I just can't do this. You say, I can do whatever I need to do through Christ who is my strength. God will provide for me. He will make a way. And if I need to be mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and everything else, then God is with me and I can do whatever I need to do. If you don't believe it, it's never going to happen. We can be free from self. Free to be the person God designed us to be. Free from bondages, addictions, and fears. Have complete forgiveness of all sin now and forever. On and on and on. Confidence and life. But let me share something with you in Ephesians 3.20. Let's go look at this scripture. This is a very popular scripture. <laughs> okay, does that whole half of the room over there like Ephesians 3.20 or something? Okay. Wow, we got the Ephesians 3.20 people over here. I don't know who you are, but that's good. Praise God. Ah! We're going to probably find out who they are before they leave. I don't know. I think sometimes we can read scriptures for years and miss things. So now, now unto him who bind in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to do, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams. So unto God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we could ever dare to hope, ask, or think. Other translations say according to his power that worketh in us. Now, I think that what we, what we think when we see that scripture is, okay, I can ask for anything and God will do it. But I'm not so sure that's what it's saying. 
I think it's saying that I can ask for anything and God will do it because of his power that's at work in me. God will enable me. He will equip me to do what I need to do. Come on. You got to read it properly. I looked it up in every translation I could find and they all say the same thing. God does things through us. Now, yes, God does things for us, but I think we sit back and wait far too much for God to do everything for us. And what he wants us to do is say, God, I'm, I'm asking you to do this, but I know you're gonna do it through me. I know we're partners. And so if you'll be with me, I'll do anything that you tell me to do. Come on, give God praise. How many of you are seeing that? Because that's very important. Well, God, I need a miracle. I need a breakthrough. God, will you, God, I need a miracle. Get me out of debt. I'll tell you what God will do. He'll give you a job. And he might give you two. He might give you some overtime. Amen. Yeah, we always want God to come and undo everything that we've done. And God will help you. God will help you heal your marriage. But he might tell you you're going to have to zip your lip and not argue all the time. <laughs> oh, this is just warm-up night. <laughs> How many of you know we always want God to change the other guy? Make them treat us nice so we have a happy life. God says, you don't worry about them. Let me change you. I want to work in you. I want to do something through you. So God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we ever dare to hope, ask, or think according to his power that worketh in us. It's not just his power that worketh out there somewhere making all these things happen, but it's his power that worketh in us. Amen? And God's power is at work in you. Now, I believe it's time to be free. Courage is fear that has said its prayers and decided to go forward anyway. A person has courage when they know a thing is not going to be easy and they decide to do it anyway. Courage faces fear and says, I feel afraid, but I'm not going to let what I feel stop me. Courage is not even needed if we don't feel afraid. <laughs> Let's determine to live courageously. Now, I want to talk to you about having the courage to find the will of God for your life. So many people say, what is God's will for my life? Joyce, what do you think God's will is for my life? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing. Joyce, what do you think I ought to do? I don't know. Go pray and hear from God the same way I've learned to. And I don't mean that we never want to give anybody advice, but we all, we're just, you know, we're afraid of making mistakes. We don't want to make decisions because we might make mistakes. We don't want to step out because we might make mistakes. Well, guess what? If you make a thousand mistakes, that doesn't mean you're a mistake. I said, if you make a thousand mistakes, that doesn't mean you're a mistake. It just means you made a mistake. And the quickest way to get over making a mistake is to say, I made a mistake. Yeah. Instead of making excuses for it and trying to hide it from everybody, just say, I miss God. I thought that's what he wanted me to do. I was wrong. You've never failed in life until you stop trying. The only way that you can fail is if you stop trying. కలర్ రోజు నేను వాడు దగ్గర నీళ్ళు తాడానికి వెళ్తుండే 
అందరిలా బడికి వెళ్ళి చదువుకోవాలనుకుంటే కానీ పోతుండే అందుకే అందరిలా నాకు ఫ్రెండ్స్ లేరు ఎప్పుడు చూసినా మా పిల్లలు బాగా ఉండరండి ఎప్పుడు చూసినా ఈరోచనాలు జ్వరం అవుతుండే డాక్టర్ కాడికి వెళ్దామంటే పైసలు లేవు ఇంకా పిల్లలు అట్నే పండుకొని ఉంటారు వీ హవ్ బీన్ ఏబుల్ టు ఐడెంటిఫై దీస్ విలేజెస్ త్రూ గవర్నమెంట్ అండ్ త్రూ సమ్ లోకల్ ఫ్యాస్టర్స్ సో దిస్ వెల్స్ వాట్ వీ ఆర్ డ్రిల్లింగ్ త్రూ జాయిస్ మైర్ మినిస్ట్రీస్ నో వీ టేక్ ప్రాపర్ కేర్ టు ఫైండ్ వేర్ ఈస్ ద గుడ్ వాటర్ through a good water diviner it will take about 3 uh, days to go to that village and drill the bore well to give fresh water to the villagers na pillal kuda badik bothaaru నేను కూడా పొలం పనికి పోయి బాగా సంపాదిస్తాను ఈ గ్రామంలో బోర్ వేయించడం ద్వారా ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి జీవితంలో ఎంతో మార్పు వచ్చింది ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి అవసరాలు తీరుతున్నాయి కాబట్టి యేసు ప్రభు దేవుని తెలుసుకొని సంఘంలో సభ్యులుగా చేరడానికి ఎంతో ఆరాట పడుతున్నారు మాకు ఇక్కడ ఒక బోర్ వేయించి మా ఆత్మీయ దాహాన్ని తీరుస్తున్నారు మేము పాస్టర్ ద్వారా ఆ నిజమైన దేవుణ్ణి తెలుసుకొని ఈ సంఘంలో ఆ యేసు ప్రభుని ఆరాధిస్తున్నాం De muziekleraar van Beethoven noemde hem een hopeloze componist. Een krant ontsloeg Walt Disney met het argument dat het hem zou ontbreken aan creativiteit. Albert Einstein werd door zijn leraar als geestelijk achtergebleven bestempeld. Well, you know, you have greatness on the inside of you, too. And no matter how many challenges you have in life, I'm here to tell you, don't you ever give up. The New York Times bestseller schrijfster Joyce Meyer zal je inspireren om ondanks moeilijke levensomstandigheden sterk te blijven. Bestel nu het boek Geef Nooit Op via onze website joy-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.